lot of you guys will start thinking, my computer's so slow, I need to upgrade it. When all you really need to do is get a faster hard drive. This is the SK Hynix Gold S31. And uh, so far, this is the fastest SSD that I have tested. We're gonna move everything from this slow old hard drive to this super fast new SSD. Now, you may be thinking I've got all my windows and all my programs and everything on there. Well, that's fine. SK Hynix has made a very easy data migration tool. So after I show you guys how to install this, I'll show you how you can just with a few clicks, transfer everything here over to here, pull this out or use it as a secondary drive and then boot from this and everything will be so much faster. It's ridiculous. Now, if you're somebody who already knows how to do this and you know, you're using like whatever programs using Linux command line, that's great. This video may not be for you, but you know, when your relatives and friends and stuff like that, who don't really know as much about computers start to uh, ask questions and be like, Hey, can you help me? Well, instead of doing that, why don't you give them the tools so that they can do it themselves, share this video and uh, let them know that there's somebody out there who can help them. So if you're worried about like opening up your computer and messing around on the inside, for one thing, this is probably the easiest thing to upgrade and to help you guys out. We've got a, you know, a computer here that we can install it. In. I'll show you how to open this one up too and replace the hard drive. If you're just buying an SSD, it's probably a good idea to get some accessories. Um, I would highly recommend just picking up a, a SATA cable. So you need that. And depending on your situation, if you have an office PC that doesn't have any extra power plugs and that sort of thing, you may want to get a SATA power Y adapter. Now it's not recommended. I would not recommend that you use these things regularly. Um, and I wouldn't recommend using these in an active environment, but for the duration of moving windows from one drive to the other, it should be just fine. As long as your computer has a little bit of power. Um, and the SSDs here do not use that much power. So using a Y adapter is not going to be that big of a deal. Just don't leave it in your system for forever and don't try to run two spinning mechanical hard drives on one of those. I would not recommend that. Now, when you're working on a computer, you want to make sure you're grounded. And that means that you don't have any charge in your, in your body. You don't have, uh, you know, you know, you don't want any static electricity while you're touching the components. It can short something out or it can, you know, damage things. It's very rare that this happens, but it is possible. So what I always like to do is make sure that I'm not like rubbing my feet all over a carpeted floor with socks on. That's, that's a no brainer, but also you'll want to ground yourself. And if you don't have an anti-static bracelet that you can clip onto a piece of metal to keep your charge neutral. I'm not going to use one of those. I have just made sure that I have touched something metal that's plugged into a plug that's going to the ground. So that's grounded. Now I've touched metal that should remove any static charge from my body. So on the motherboard, there's all this stuff. It may look a little intimidating if you've never looked under the hood, but the SATA connectors are very obvious. This is what they look like. See these things? There's only a couple of them there. Some motherboards have five or six of them. Now, one other thing to note is some of the more high-end motherboards may have L-shaped SATA connectors that go over on the side. So you may see a bunch of L-shaped ones, and that's really all you're gonna need to mess with other than the power cable. So you're not gonna have to unplug or mess with anything else. It's not that big of a deal. Let's crack open the Dell, shall we? I mean, there's a lot of different computers out there and they're not all identical. Um, a lot of the office computers have different tabs and things to try to make it a little easier for the IT guys who want to come and like mess with stuff and upgrade and whatever. But if you have like an HP or something like that, just, you know, you can go online and type the exact model number and type teardown and you can find uh, various videos and various uh, online resources that show you how to open up the computer. All right, so once you take the top off, the first thing you're gonna notice, in order to remove the CD-ROM, you just lift up on the tab and slide it back before you pull it out. Make sure you've unplugged the SATA uh, connector and also the little power plug there. Just leave them where they are, they're fine. Before I remove the big hard drive, I'm actually going to leave the CD-ROM out and plug in my SK Hynix SSD where that CD-ROM was plugged in. You can just use the same SATA connector or you can unplug it and plug in your new SATA connector. I would just use the same one because this is gonna replace the big hard drive. So just plug this in with the, uh, the SATA that's already there. And here's the cool thing. There's no moving parts in here, so you don't have to worry about anything getting damaged if it moves around or, or it vibrates or something like that. It's not that big of a deal. Whereas with this, if there's vibrations, if it's not secured correctly, it can severely shorten the life or damage the drive. No more worries anymore with this. So what I'm gonna do during the installation is I'm just gonna plug this in and leave it like just laying there until it's finished. doesn't matter if it's in a weird spot or whatever. Now you'll notice with this Dell computer, the power going to the CD-ROM is a different kind of connector. And you'll see that with uh, also over here with this one, you'll see that it has a different connector. A lot of times CD-ROMs have different power connectors and there's not an extra SATA power connector in 
the office computer here. That's why I need the Y adapter just for the time being. With this one, we had some extra connectors, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so I unplugged the power from the current hard drive. I put the Y adapter there and then plugged both the current hard drive and this one back in. All right, so we have these two both hooked up at the same time. You plug in your mouse, your keyboard, the monitor, and also the power to your Dell, and you can power it on. You do not even need to put the side panel back on. You can just leave it on the desk as is while you're working on it. Before we get to the data migration tool, and you guys can skip ahead a few minutes if you wanna just get to that. If all you needed was your you know, office PC. But I wanna show you guys how to do this again on the Lenovo Legion because it's a bigger gaming PC. Uh, it's a little easier, but a little different. With a Lenovo Legion, there's a front panel and a back panel. You're gonna to wanna to remove both of those so that it's nice and naked so you can mess around. The reason I'm removing both the front and the back is I need some power connectors and they're all bunched up in the back. Sometimes they're gonna be tied down. You may need to clip cable tie to, in order to free them up so you can feed them through. Or sometimes they're just, you know, crammed over in a corner. Find out where they are, find one that's free, and then you can either route it so that the SSD can be in the front here, or you know what, the SSD can go anywhere in your case that you want to. If there's not a spot for it, you can even hold it down with tape. It's pretty ridiculous. So the other thing you're gonna need to do is get your own SATA connector for, um, for the data transfer and make sure you plug that into the motherboard. All right, so I routed the, uh, the power here into the front, and then the SATA connector, you can route it any way you like. There's no rules. Uh, you know, you can route it through the back. You can, if, if you don't care about the cables and all that sort of thing, you can leave the cables a mess in the, on the inside. It may not look as good. And it may not be as good for airflow, but just one cable is not going to be that big of a deal. I've routed mine through the back and then back in, plug it into the motherboard over here. Now, with a lot of pre-builds, they don't have too many extra SATA connectors. They just have what they need on the motherboard. So if you have a CD-ROM or another hard drive, you may have to unplug that one during the operation of this. Just make sure your main, just make sure your main Windows hard drive is plugged in, and then you can plug in your SK Hynix drive and be good to go. So once you have those two plugged in, you can boot into Windows, and then it's time to get down to that data migration tool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and download the data migration tool. We're in Windows now. And you know something I need to do is I need to make sure that the computer detected the, the hard drive. So how do you do that? Click on start down here in the corner, and then you need to go to this PC. Do not click on it yet. Or if you're on an older version of Windows, it may say my computer or something like that. But new versions of Windows, it says this PC. Right click on it and click manage. All right, now from here, you have all these different management options. Just go down to disk management and it should detect it. Oh, look at that. It detected it. Um, there's two different options here. You want to do GPT, and now it found our disk, and there's a bunch of unallocated space. It's right there. So you can go ahead and format this now if you wanted to, but the SK Hynix data migration tool will take care of that. I'll leave this open just in case. But thankfully, SK Hynix has partnered with Macrium Software. Macrium Reflect is um, one of the easiest, most simple to use data migration tools on the market. They seem to have made this thing even easier for their rendition. So up on the top here, you pick your uh, your main hard drive and you want to make sure that you're picking the Windows drive. I mean, if you want to copy, if you wanted to, you know, copy a data drive onto this and just speed up your data and stuff as a secondary drive, you can do that too. Just make sure you pick the right drive. Now, drive zero, see, it says Windows right here. If you go to drive one, that's just data. It's a Western digital. You can see it's the spinning disk in here. We don't want to mess with that one. It's just going to live there forever. And there's the uh, the Hynix drive, right? So we're gonna start with our Windows drive as the source, and the target will be the Hynix drive. SHGS31 is the model number of the one we're using here. And you hit next, it's gonna tell you what's gonna happen. See, source disk there, 120 gigabytes is gonna be transferred onto this much larger one terabyte drive. Very simple, but this will just, you know, ensure that everything's correct before you do it. Then when you hit start, it's gonna say one more time, Hey, are you sure you want to do this? You sure? Yep, we're going to do it. But it's going to overwrite this stuff. Yes, we're going to overwrite that. So there we go. Now, this might take a few minutes, depending upon your situation. If you're just doing like I'm doing, I'm copying from uh, one smaller SSD to the much larger and slightly faster SK Hynix SSD, that's not going to take too long. But if you guys are copying from an old hard drive, well, you might think that it's slow. And it is slow because you are completely at the mercy of the slower hard drive. It can't copy from here to here any faster than this drive can send the data. This is the last time that you are going to be hampered by slow performance from a drive like this because once it gets onto here, it's gonna be so much faster. So go get yourself a cup of coffee, go get yourself a bourbon if it's in the evening, a cup of tea, glass of milk, I don't care. Just get something kicked back, Watch a show, this might take more than an hour, maybe a little longer depending on how much stuff you have on your hard drive. Just wait, 
because it's gonna be worth it. Once you've transferred Windows from your old hard drive to your SK Hynix hard drive, if you have one of the Dell Office computers or something and you're replacing the hard drive, now it's time to do that. Now for this particular Dell, there's a hard drive caddy. You see a blue plastic area that you can like move. It's like a locking mechanism. Just slide that down until you see that it's unlocked. Now you'll want to unplug the SATA and the power first from the hard drive. Sometimes there'll be a full size hard drive like this in here, that's typical. Um, and if you're doing a, an office upgrade, upgrading everybody in your office, you'll be messing with a lot of these. I actually got lucky when I bought my office computer and it had a, uh, an SSD already in there. So it was already fast, not quite as fast as this one. Uh, but it's a much smaller SSD, so I'm still going to upgrade it to a bigger SSD just so we can have more room to do stuff. All right, so they're both in the system right now. Let's see how much faster our SK Hynix is than the spinning hard disk. I, I want to mention that our hard drive is probably going to be faster than yours when we do have a gaming rig. So think about that. But this is going to be a huge improvement even with our fast hard drive. And as you guys can see here, uh, down at the bottom, 168 was as fast as it could get on the read. And over here, 533 was as fast as it could get on the read with the SK Hynix Gold. Yes. Now, if you're just swapping out the drives, all you have to do is remove the old drive, plug the new drive in, and when Windows starts, it's going to be like everything's normal. Like nothing's going to have changed except everything's way faster because you have a new hard drive. It'll just boot up and work. And I think that's what a lot of you guys are going to be doing, just booting it up with this new drive and it'll just work. Let's say you want to keep both hard drives in your computer, but you obviously want to boot from the SK Hynix drive rather than your old slow drive. So what you need to do is reboot your computer, keep pressing the delete key or the F2 key, or any key that allows you to get into your BIOS. It'll say on the screen, press F1 or F2 or delete to enter setup. Once you're in there, you need to look for your boot sequence and each motherboard is going to be a little different. This is the Dell Optiplex. So as you can see here, we were able to go and select our boot sequence, uncheck the drives we don't want, and then we're able to use the up and down hours to put the correct drive on top. Some motherboards will make you press page up and page down, and some of them you'll press enter, go to a menu, and then select the drive you wish to boot from. Once you reboot, you can go back into your operating system, and here you'll have two Windows drives. Now go ahead and right click and hit properties on each one of those. Make sure your C drive is the size of your SK Hynix drive. If they're different sizes, make sure the C drive is the size of your SK Hynix drive. You can go to your old hard drive, right click, click on format, and then just do a quick format and that'll wipe the drive so that you can use it for storage. The last thing you have to do is button up your systems. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. We talked about taking them apart. It, putting them back together is just the same in reverse. So should be pretty easy to do. Button them up and you're done. If you guys can find one of those, that's great as well. I would have one of these as a storage, even if I had a, a you know a system that could accommodate an M.2, but for a lot of people who have like office computers and stuff, they may not have room or they may not have a slot for an M.2 and that's where this comes in. It's gonna be just something for everybody. Upgrade to an SSD, y'all. See you guys in the comments. Ugh, superb.